Good Wednesday evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little after 7 p.m. That means it is time for This Week in Abate. I'm Josh Wikowski, your state legislative coordinator. Joining me a little bit later, as always, will be our public relations coordinator, Chris Hansen. We have a full show for you this fine evening, but the very first thing we want to talk about is kind of recap what happened down at the State House today. Um, as you can see beside me, it says, the power of three. Um, we testified today in committee. Now let's start where this started at yesterday. Yesterday, we put out an email asking for you, the members, to file witness slips in support of two pieces of legislation, House Bill 656 and House Bill 36. We're going to talk about 656 first. 656 started her life last year as a ban on children riding on motorcycles, and it was due to some actions that some county sheriffs had seen that they didn't approve of. Um, and there were some things that, frankly, us as riders wouldn't approve of either. I'm not going to get into that right now. But rather than accept a ban on children on motorcycles, we negotiated a, uh, a situation where we looked at the laws dealing with passengers on motorcycles. And we found that while a passenger is required to be behind the rider, and there's a requirement for there to be footrests, there was no requirement for the passenger to be able to touch a footrest. So we said, let's just make it a requirement. Passenger has to touch a footrest. That eliminated the sheriff's concerns, solidified kind of what was already law, and everybody's happy. Now, I say the power of three because today, after you, the members, filed your witness slips, and by the way, you filed over 100 witness slips in favor of this bill, which I cannot thank you enough, but the American Motorcyclist Association and the MRF filed witness slips in favor of this legislation as well. So I was able to testify this morning in committee that not only is the state motorcycle rights group on board with this legislation, but the two national motorcycle rights groups were on board with this legislation. And that's important to be able to say, and that's also important to have, to have all three of us pulling in the exact same direction and working in unison. Um, I can't thank Tiffany at AMA enough or Rocky over there at MRF. The ability for the three of us to text back and forth and work together, it is really very, very helpful to all of us. Um, so that's what's going on with the power of three. Now, like I mentioned, you know, we talked about the the trailer plate issue, the other bill. So let's go there. So trailer plates. We have a bill coming up. It's coming up Thursday, tomorrow, in committee, 203 in the afternoon. Why it's 203, I couldn't begin to tell you. Um, but it would reduce motors or not motorcycle trailer plates, TA plates from 118 down to $18 back where they should be. It eliminates the 500% increase that we saw in TA plates. So we're hoping that bill gets favorable, but I asked you to file witness slips on that as well. And you did, you responded with over 177 witness slips at last count. Um, that's pretty impressive. Now, I will say we've been joined by some off-road groups. They're starting to file some witness slips on this. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit later on. But it's important that we file those slips. And what House Bill 36 is going to be is it's going to be the weather balloon. If that bill still gets sunk in committee tomorrow after the amount of witness slips that are present and everybody making their arguments, then we know we've got a heavy, heavy lift ahead of us on this. Um, so that's going to be the thing that we're watching, but this is why we're pushing. Now I will say there are, it's like right around a dozen different bills that are trying to tackle the issue of the trailer plates. They all do it some in same way, some in slightly different. I'm still doing analysis on it all to figure out what are going to be the bills that are most likely to survive and give us the best option for getting what we want when it comes to the trailer plate issue. Um, but like I said, those witness slips, they're the most important thing that we're dealing with right now, or the most important thing that I've asked for for the last week. So let's talk about witness slips. Um, witness slips are just a way for you to register your voice in front of a committee. Now, those witness slips come in three different types. There's oral testimony, and that means that you have worked it out with somebody on the committee that you're going to be testifying that's what oral testi testimony is. You can't just sign up for oral testimony and expect that you're going to get called on to speak. Otherwise, committee hearings would run days, 
uh, it, it could get bad with some of the committees that I know about. Um, but you can do a written, which is where the sponsors or somebody on the committee has asked you to file a written statement, or you do what's called record of appearance only. And that's the method that we prefer. If we're asking you to sign a witness slip, all you have to do is take the time to fill out that slip and do record of appearance only. Now, while I'm proud to say we had 100 witness slips in favor of House Bill 656 this morning, we also had six witness slips that were opposed, um, and I don't know why. I don't know why they chose opponent rather than proponent, because they were all ABATE members, um, and that's kind of the thing. So we saw some things that kind of indicated that maybe some people hadn't watched the, uh, the video that we put out about how to do witness slips. So we're going to kind of go into that here real quick. I'm going to show you this short little video. It's about six minutes. It talks about how to do witness slips. The things that are important is to know whether you're doing proponent, opponent, and that you also mentioned that you're not officially representing abate of Illinois. Um, that, that carries a legal definition in Section 3. If you're actually appearing before the committee on behalf of somebody, there's a lot of stuff there. In the business section, you could put your local abate chapter. That's not an issue. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that here coming up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are here to show you how to fill out a witness slip. And directly in front of you is the website for the Illinois General Assembly. You can see it right at the top, ILGA.gov. That's where we go when we're looking up anything legislatively with the state of Illinois. Um, for this particular example, we're going to show House Bill 36. So what you're going to do if we put out an alert on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and you're looking for the bill that we're talking about, you go right here where it says search by bill number, and you're gonna type in HB 36 for House Bill 36. Hit enter, and here is House Bill 36. Now what House Bill 36 does is it gets rid of the 500% increase in the trailer tax. You can see right here, a men's vehicle code takes the tax from 118 to 18. 500% increase was enacted back in 2019, effective 2020. What I wanted to point out was the number of co-sponsors on this. They're all friends to Abate of Illinois. Um, we've got Jeff Kiker, Tony McCombie, Stephanie Kifowit, Tom Demmer, Barbara Hernandez, Tom Bennett, Mike Murphy, Andrew Chesney, Charlie Meyer, Noreen Hammond, Ryan Spain, uh, Tom Weber, Keith Wheeler, and Dan Swanson. So far, we expect to see more. But the point being, what they're doing is helping by sponsoring it. But we need to do our part by showing a community support for that. And the way that we do that is by filing witness slips. Um, so when you get these alerts, you're going to see uh, there's a committee hearing usually scheduled. So right here, it says last action to sales, amusement, and other taxes subcommittee. You're going to click on that. And it's going to take you to the committee. And you're going to go to notice of hearing. Um, so at notice of hearing, here's the notice. It's going to be March 11th, 2.03 p.m., virtual room three. It's an online hearing. But what you're interested in is where it says create witness slip. So you're going to hit create witness slip, and it's going to take you to the GA dashboard. Um, this is the fastest way to get to what you want to um, within the dashboard is to go through the way that we just did. Um, so there you go, House Bill 36. It's right here, Katie Stewart, Vehicle Trailer Weight Tax. So if you go to the magnifying glass, that will allow you to view current witness slips. What we're interested in is creating a witness slip. So you're going to hit that little pencil and paper there, create witness slip, and a blank form is going to pop up. Now, I've done the liberty of filling one out kind of fake. This is what you're going to want to do. House Bill 36, you're going to put your name, address, city. Then under firm, business, or agency, you're going to put self unless you're representing a business that you own. And then title as well is going to be self. Then your email is going to be whatever valid email address you want to use for this. And that's very important because you're going to get emailed your witness slip. Put in a phone number if you want to. Under Section 2, where it says representation, you're going to leave that section blank unless you are representing a group. Um, I put down a Bait of Illinois because I am the lobbyist for Bait of Illinois along with Todd Vandermeid. I recommend that you leave that blank. 
um, just saying for that reason. So under the section three position, you're gonna select original bill, and then you're gonna select proponent because we are in favor of this bill as it has been introduced. Then down here under testimony, um, you're not testifying before the committee, you're not obligated to do anything. So you don't wanna hit oral, you don't wanna hit written, you wanna hit record of appearance only. And what that does is that just simply files you on a list that they actually read at the beginning of hearing this bill of who's in favor and who's not in favor. So after you do that, you're gonna click, I agree to the terms of the ILGA agreement. And then you're gonna go below this captcha and you're gonna hit create slip. Now, as soon as you do that, and sometimes you may get challenged by captcha, sometimes you won't be, but after you've successfully done that, it will notify you that you've successfully completed a witness slip. And then you will be emailed something that looks just like this, where it has your name, the firm, agency, all that fun stuff, city, state, address, but down at the bottom, original, proponent, and up in the top left corner is the bill or resolution that you filed a witness slip on. Um, so that is important to know. Now, after you get done doing that, you can go right back through this same process and you can go see who has witness slips that are filed if you wanna see what that's looking like on a bill. Um, and that's gonna look kind of like this. You can see here's HB 36, here's the proponents, no opponents so far. Now, something else that's really important. This is how you have to go through it if you're going at it from the beginning of ILGA.gov. Now, if you click on the links that are contained in our MailChimp email alerts, they will take you directly to this blank form screen. And then all you have to do is fill it out, click proponent, click record of appearance only, you agree to the terms, create that slip. It's just that simple. Um, this is one of the easiest ways we can show a large scale support for a bill. Takes maybe two minutes out of your day to do, um, but it greatly supports the legislators who have our backs down there at the state house when they propose bills like this. So hopefully this has been informative to you. Look forward to doing more videos like this. Um, as always, if you have any questions, just mark them down in the comments and we'll try to get to them as we can. Uh, until later, everybody have a good day. And so that is how we do witness slips in the state of Illinois using the ILGA system or the My ILGA system. Um, as you can see, they're kind of a really important tool. It is something that legislators do pay attention to. It's also a way of showing strength within your organization. However, one of the most important parts, there's section three, it says representing, that is if your actual professional representation is actually what that stands for when you're representing in section three, we had a lot of people put abate of Illinois. Well, the issue was they were looking for the right abate of Illinois person to send the meeting link to so I could testify. That was fun yesterday. Um, please make sure that when we're filling these out, if you want to put your local chapter of abate in the business section up in section two, that's fine. But section three should always be left blank or should say self right there. Either way, that's the best way to treat that. Um, other than that, it was a successful hearing this morning. It was in and out less than five minutes, 10-0, uh, recommend due pass. It went to the House floor. Hopefully it gets passed in the House. We move it over to the Senate. We're already looking at Senate sponsors. Thank you to Representative Tom Bennett for what he's done on this bill. Um, but I know you guys are tired of hearing legislative stuff already. So we're going to kick it over to Chris Hansen here coming up. And we are going to be talking about the upcoming events. Chris, take it away, buddy. Man, well, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk events, and we have a lot of them to get to. Uh, this weekend alone, you could put on a ton of miles if you're gonna try and hit all these. So, we're gonna start with it's actually a four chapter teaming up here. Uh, it's Freedom Valley, Piotas, Freebird, and Spoon River chapters are teaming up to do a four chapter chili cook off at Pub Twenty Nine in Green Valley. Uh, it's this Saturday, March 13th, and uh, social uh, social hour starts at 5 and 6 p.m. is judging. Uh, different categories, plaques awarded for each category. So uh, head to Green Valley Pub 29 and get in on that. Uh, also, the 13th, 
at Calamity Jane's in Sugar Grove, the Duquesne chapter has got their Daytona 200 motorcycle race watch party. Um, for anybody that didn't make it to Daytona, stop on out to Sugar Grove at 11.30 a.m. Uh, we're going to have the races playing on the TV, um, so you get to hang around uh, with bikers, have some good food, some drinks, watch the Daytona 200, some motorcycle races, uh, and it's going to be a good time, so stop on out for that. Uh, and then also the 13th, the Prairie Land Abate has got their St. Paddy's Day party, and it's a potluck dinner, so... To get into this party, you need to bring a dish to pass. That's how you get in. Uh, they've got a DJ. They've got drink specials. Uh, that is at the uh, Prairie Land Debate Building on the 13th, obviously. That starts at 7 o'clock p.m., so you can celebrate St. Patrick's Day with Prairie Land Debate. And also, the 13th Central Illinois Debate has got their 33rd annual broomstick pool tournament. Um, that is a sign up at 12 to 1 p.m. It's a $10 entry fee. Uh, and there are rules on this. You have to bring your own broom. It's got to be stock, uh, top six inches, and it has to be able to sweep the floor. So make sure you're following the rules when you bring your broom. And they are doing a special price for the best decorated broom. So that's at Harley's Pub in Galesburg. Again, sign up 12 to 1. So be there for that. Uh, and then. You could start off that morning with Kishwaukee Valley. They're doing their chapter breakfast from 8 till 11 p.m. That's a, or I'm sorry, a.m. That's at Neighbors Bar and Grill in Loves Park. Uh, seven bucks per breakfast, and it's a full breakfast serve. So start your day out there. And then when you're done there, head uh, over to the Northwest Region 15th Annual Chili Shootout. Um, Sandy, obviously, we've, we've talked about this. She does so much work to get this put together. Uh, that's 3 to 7 p.m. Last chili entries at 4. Judging's 4.15 to 4.30. Uh, they've got a uh, silent auction going. They've got a bake sale going. Um, all the proceeds of this go to the Abate State Pack. So make sure you, know, you have your breakfast, you do these other events, and then head on down to the chili shootout down there. So that handles uh, this coming weekend. And then we head on to the following weekend, and we'll start off with March 20th is the 10 Mile Creek chapter. They're having their chili cook-off, and that's at the depot in Kenny, Illinois. Um, entries start at 3, and judging starts at 4. So they've got a 50-50 drawing open to everybody. Uh, it's a $5 entry fee, and there's three different classes. Um, and then it is a buck per bowl and a buck per vote. So make sure you have that on your calendar. Um, and then a, a fun event on the 20th is going to be the Open Roads of Bait Axe Throwing Competition. Uh, this is a bull and bear axe throwing in Montgomery from 1 to 2.30 p.m. If you have not done axe throwing, I recommend it. It is fun as hell. Uh, it's $24.99 a person. It's It goes for an hour. Um, so get there uh, probably about 12.45 for uh, registration, but that's 1 to 2.30 uh, contact Linda Olson if you have questions on that. And then also on the 20th, uh, the Bait of Illinois Freedom Riders have their broomstick tournament. Uh, that sign-up is from 11 to noon at Arizona Joe's in uh, Centralia, Illinois. It's 10 bucks to participate, so um, they would like you to bring uh, some food to pass. A covered dish would be awesome. Um, so you can head there to have another shot in a broomstick tournament. And then we go to the next day on the 21st, uh, Duquesne Chapter has got their ABC of Bait Bowling Classic, their fourth annual. Uh, registration's at one, bowling starts at two. Uh, 15 bucks gets you two games of shoes, and for an extra 10, you get into a nine-pin no-tap tournament. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz on this one. It's getting bigger every year. So uh, $100 cash prize minimum, toy shops giving away two hours of free service work. So... Plenty of opportunities to win, and all the proceeds from that go to the Duquesne Down Riders Fund. So be there for that. And then we go to the next weekend, starting with the Liberty Abate Pre-Bash Cornhole Tournament on the 27th. Uh, Sign-up is at noon, and that starts at 1. It's 5 bucks to play, uh, and that's at the Roadhouse, so make sure you're there to that. Um, if you're good at bags, head on down. It's a good time to do that. Uh, and they, uh, the Roadhouse is having a band later that day, so you can play bags and then stick around for the band. 
Uh, also on the 27th, Black Hawk Chapter has got their broomstick pool tournament. Uh, it's at Jim's Knoxville Tap. Uh, Sign-up is at 5 o'clock there. Everybody welcome. They're also throwing in a chili cook-off at that event there, so you can bring that. Chili's going to be sold at a buck per bowl. So make sure you've got that on your calendar. Plenty of pool tournament options there. Uh, also, the 27th is the Eastern Illinois Bait. Uh, they've got their bowling tournament. It's a nine-pin no-tap tournament. Um, so that go- sign-ups from three to four. Bowling starts at four. It's 15 bucks a person. That gets you free shoes with all that, and prizes will be awarded. So this, again, is another one that's open to the public. Uh, it's a good event to bring some new members with you. And then the next day on Sunday, the 28th, uh, the Illini chapter is having a chili cook-off at the Lewistown VFW. Uh, the judging starts at 3 o'clock. Donations are welcome, so you can swing by the Illini chapter uh, for some good camaraderie, have some good chili and some fun there. And then the last event I have to touch on is Monday, March 29th from 12 to 5. The Duquesne chapter is teaming up with State Representatives Barbara Hernandez, Keith Wheeler, and Stephanie Kifowit, all very good friends uh, to Abate of Illinois. Uh, and we are having a blood drive. That, like I said, that's from noon to 5 uh, at or in Aurora. The address is there. Um, so you can do some good for your community um, and you know, hang out with Duquesne Abate and some state reps. As Like I said, we're, uh, we're all teaming up together to get this done and do some good. So... Those are the events uh, for what I wanted to talk about. But the one last thing I do want to go over, and I asked Josh to give me some some time on this program tonight to vent. Uh, This past Sunday, I went to the Will County Triathlon uh, event they had. And in driving there, and this is nothing new because I see it all the time. But driving there, two out of three cars had a texting driver. And I literally watched a sport bike rider. He's going down, down the road. And a car completely merged off in front of him, cut him off. Luckily, the biker was paying attention. Nothing uh, too bad happened there, but literally just cut him off. And as I passed this SUV that cut him off, the guy's texting away in his car. It's just irritating as hell to watch this time and time again. And when we talk about getting involved in your community and educating the public, this has got to be part of it. I mean... Texting and driving, distracted driving, it is against the law. We have representatives like Christina Castro, a state senator, who put forth legislation to make the rules stricter. We're working this year as a Beta Illinois for stricter rules and everything, but we have got to get the point across to put down the damn phones and drive. You should have start watching for more. And this isn't just a motorcycle thing. This is semi-drivers. This is re- you know regular motors. If you're not paying attention because you're playing around on Facebook, you know, your post can wait or whatever the hell you're doing. Get this through to people to put the phone down and start seeing motorcycles. We cannot stress this enough. So I will get off my soapbox now. Thank you, Chris, for that. And uh, I'll be bringing him back to get him back on his soapbox here in another couple of minutes. Uh, Real quick, go into the comments section. Uh, Dan, you asked about Legislative Day. We're going to be covering that in the wrap-up later on in the show here. Lindsay, you asked about the website to sign up for witness slips. I will give you that link after we finish this show, and I can go back, grab it, and then I can just post it there as a comment reply. And Dennis, you asked about the dates for Heartland Steam. I believe that is the last weekend in March up in Wisconsin, a bait of Wisconsin's area. Um, so those are just some of the answers to what we've got going on in the comments. Now, the next thing we wanted to bring up, I mentioned that we've got some groups that have joined us in the fight on House Bill 36 with the trailer plates. Some of those guys are off-road people. Uh, you know, just like we tow our motorcycles, they tow side-by-sides, ATVs, all that fun stuff. So they're very upset by the trailer plate issue as well. Um, but there's some additional stuff going on in the off-road world. Um, right now, there's a fair number of off-road people that want to be able to get access to county highways, tar chip roads, township roads, that kind of stuff, and be able to use their side-by-sides, be able to use ATVs, be able to use dirt bikes on county highways, county roads, township roads, so they can go, you know, from their farm into town real quick to grab something, you know, smaller vehicles for that stuff, or cross farm field to farm field. 
Now, officially, the state of Illinois has a neutral position on this. We simply watch the legislation to make sure that it's nothing that's going to get us hurt or that's going to affect our recreational trails program. Um, but I'm starting to hear from more and more chapters that are interested in this. So what I'm telling you is if you're in a bait chapter and this is something that interests you, we need to be hearing from you. We need to get a feel for what our membership really wants to see happen with that issue. Um, so just keep that in mind. We have a BOD meeting coming up in, Fe in uh, February, in April. Um, if you want, you can shoot me a message. Uh, ski at abateil.org and just let me know where, you, where your chapters are feeling on that issue. The other off-road issue we are dealing with, and uh, I'm just going to flat out call it for what it is, uh, Polaris really just doesn't give a damn about off-road riders and really only cares about themselves and their company at this point. And I hate to be that blunt about it, but here's the situation. Polaris wants to make it legal to bring in vehicles that are the size of Jeep Wranglers, basically, the size, as heavy as a Mazda Miata and about as tall as a Jeep Wrangler, and call them an ATV and say that they should have access to our recreational trails program, the recreational trails program that Beta of Illinois works with, with IDNR. Um, you know, it, it's bunk. Uh, we've heard from several off-road parks. They don't want it. We've heard from the Department of Natural Resources. They don't want it. We're hearing from other off-road riders and farmers who say there's no need for it. But Polaris continues to push for it. Why? Because they see a way to sell a twenty dollars to $25,000 UTV that's basically a car or a small Jeep that they can sell to very wealthy people and they see a way to make money. And it's just like the slingshot where they came in and called it a motorcycle, even though it had a car motor, car transmission, seat belts, bucket seats, steering wheel, but it saved them from being involved in crash standards. So that's what the game they decided to play. And here they are playing the same game again. They want to modify the definition of ATV and recreational off-highway vehicle so that way their vehicle doesn't end up in a separate classification and doesn't end up getting looked at for crash standards. Guys, that's Polaris in a nutshell. Uh, you know, every time I think that company's coming back around, this is what they're doing to us again. Uh, I've got a meeting with their lobbyists tomorrow at noon over my lunch hour. We'll see what happens. Um, they're trying to modify their proposal a little bit. We'll report back on that. But these are just some of the things that Abate works on with regards to off-road. You know, we support motorcyclists on-road. We support off-road riders as well. So, the other issue that we love to get into, and it has reared its ugly head. Uh, I got a phone call yesterday from an attorney, and I'm going to bring back Chris for this so he can hear this in all its glory. Chris, how are we doing? You there with me, buddy? I'm here. All righty, man. So, yesterday I get a phone call from an attorney up in the Rockford area. This attorney was discussing with me several gaming establishments, small bars, restaurants, and whatnot, who had been visited by the Illinois Gaming Board. And the Illinois Gaming Board came and visited them and said, you know what, you're letting the wrong kind of motorcyclist hang out here. And because you're doing that, we're going to threaten you with revoking your gaming license. They're, what they want to do is they want to revoke the gaming license or threaten to revoke, because I'm going to tell you how it's all bunk here in a moment these businesses that the gaming is really the only thing keeping them alive right now. Good Lord knows the whole COVID response has just about killed every small mom and pop bar and restaurant in Illinois. They've been holding on with this gaming revenue and what the gaming board is alleging. They are saying that if you are the member of a particular type of motorcycle group, that you're not allowed to freely associate at these lawful places of business. They're claiming that it's an association with a known criminal enterprise. Um, now, that's really funny because I don't know a single motorcycle club that masquerades as a criminal enterprise anywhere. Um, but what makes it even worse is they're basically saying that because of the vests that these guys wear, their freedom of expression, that they're automatically criminals without them ever having been convicted of a crime. And then because they choose to freely associate and do lawful business at a place that any other place could do business at the exact same way any other person could, that that's associating with a criminal element. Gets even funnier. Um, the way they're handling this, I have heard the term shakedown 
from three different people now. They are complaining of gaming board agents coming in, treating them aggressively, and making veiled threats at them. But here's the thing. The definition of association means that there has to be a business relationship where the so-called criminal enterprise would be profiting from it. So in other words, this isn't association. This is just simply the gaming board overexerting their authority to profile a motorcycle club and threaten small business. Now, Chris, I know you're a huge fan of motorcycle profiling. What's your take on this? Yeah, I, yeah I'm a huge fan, all right. I, what's my take? My take is it's disgusting. Um, you know, we, we work on motorcyclist profiling for reasons exactly like this. I mean, you and I have had the conversation over the last couple of weeks about bars up in my area that are kicking people out for wearing their colors or um, telling them that they will not be served or not allowed entry unless they remove their vests or anything like that. So to hear something like this coming out of the Rockford area, like I said, it's absolutely disgusting and nobody should stand by for that. I mean, first off, you've got these businesses that have struggled with trying to stay open or not lose their business because of all the COVID you know, garbage. They're going to threaten them. Yeah, it is. I mean, and that's exactly what it is. It's the gaming board making veiled threats. But here's what the gaming board didn't count on. We don't like when government makes veiled threats and threatens the basic freedoms that are guaranteed in our Constitution. And that's what the gaming board is doing. They're threatening First Amendment, period. That's what this is. Yep. So Abate of Illinois is going to fight, and we are going to fight pretty hard on this one. Um, I've talked with our lobbyist, Todd Vandermeid. He's given me a particularly evil way to go about this, um, and I signed up right away because that's just who I am. Um, and we're going to be unveiling that uh, as the legislative season goes by. But we wanted to bring this to you, let you know this is the kind of stuff that goes on. This is what we talk about when we talk about profiling. Um, unfortunately, the gaming board gets to write their own rules. They get to write it in an incredibly vague way that they get to interpret it any way that they want to. And then they get to harass innocent establishments because they cater to motorcyclists. They even harassed a VFW for crying out loud. What kind of an organization do you have to be that you want to threaten the First Amendment rights of individuals that are gathering in a VFW? Chris? I, I don't know that I can use the verbiage of what I would call them on, on Facebook. Here, Zuckerberg might kick me off. But uh, again, and this is where I'm going to point out that, you know, and you said a bait's going to fight. That's good because a bait should fight. And that's what we're here for, to support these clubs and to get rid of this motorcyclist profiling. I mean, there's legislation sitting out there for it. And, and this is my plea to the members of Abate, Illinois. You know, we sit here and we talk about these issues and we have these issues slapping us in the face. I mean, this is literally being crammed down our throats. Motorcyclist profiling, something we talk about every year, all year. And now we have this right in front of us. And like Josh said, Abate's going to fight. Well, this is where we as members need to get up off our asses and do something sitting around and saying good somebody else will take care of it is not the answer here i've been pushing since i took over pr we are stronger as a force in numbers get up off your ass and when these opportunities present themselves and josh puts out things like here we need to do this or todd vandermite says hey we need to do this get up and do it because we're not going to stop motorcyclists profiling sitting around and saying someone else will take care of the problem this is why we exist and it is time to fight all right chris and on that note buddy i'm gonna let you uh go get yourself a beer after that one have yourself a wonderful evening we'll have you back next week all right or actually That's no wait a minute man. are we uh we gonna yeah. do next week or are we gonna cancel next oh, week no, I, th I think we were gonna skip it because of saint patrick's day all right all right so there you have it folks no show next week all right all righty so chris thank you very much for being on again uh so just a couple more things to talk about tonight um one is you see i've got electric avenue here um of all the things i expected to be working on this legislative season i really didn't expect electric motorcycles to be a an issue um, it, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, there are, I think right now I'm like at six bills that I'm working on 
that involved the issue of electric motorcycles. Um, and to give you an example, one of them was is House Bill 245. Um, what House Bill 245 did is it said, we're going to do away with the incentives for alternative fuel vehicles, uh, high ethanol vehicles, propane vehicles, that kind of stuff. And we're going to make it an incentive program for electric vehicles. Because uh, if you attended my session a couple weeks ago uh, down there at Steel, I mentioned this is the future. Everything in transportation is moving towards electric vehicles. Like it or not, this is where the industry is headed and we're going to have to deal with it. So we've got a lot of legislation that popped up for electric cars, and I made the ask, hey, what about electric motorcycles? Because we do have them out there. Companies like Zero have been building them for almost a decade now. Harley-Davidson's had the live wire in play for about two and a half years. There's more companies bringing them online. So this bill I'm talking about, House Bill 245, it created an incentive for electric cars. I said, well, hey, why not an incentive for electric motorcycles as well? And the sponsor, Representative Kelly Cassidy, put me in touch with the group that was pushing it, Illinois IEC, um, Environmental Council. Uh, Jennifer Walling's the lobbyist there. And I asked her about, hey, could we include motorcycles? And she was more than happy to. Um, so what they've done now is they've modified this bill to make it a low income uh, issue where people who, are, who have poverty line income will get an incentive to purchase electric vehicles, uh, including motorcycles. And then they went and did one thing better. Um, if this bill were to pass, it caps the purchase price of the vehicle. And why that's important is because one thing I worried about was increasing the sales of Tesla. Because we all know Tesla has an autopilot feature. We all know Tesla doesn't particularly care whether or not it sees motorcycles or how it accomplishes that goal. Um, they don't even particularly care about the lives of their own drivers, as we've seen over the last five years using that autopilot feature. Um, I was worried about more Teslas being on the road as a result of this program. They capped the purchase price at like 32, 32 and a half, which means no Teslas are going to be purchased from this rebate program if it were to become law. And I think that's a really cool thing to have. Um, so that's just one of the things we're working on. We're also working on the issues where they want to increase the registration fees on electric motorcycles to be on par with electric cars, which means that electric motorcycles would pay an extra $100 a year in addition to the 41. We're looking at that, trying to get that scaled back to be proportional because you don't use a motorcycle year round. Um, and we're dealing with the issue of they want to do away with the electric vehicle plate in several different bills, but they want to make it an EV sticker. Um, so we're asking to make sure that the EV sticker is applicable to motorcycle plates as well. So that way motorcycles, if a place has, you know, electric vehicle parking, the motorcycle would be able to take advantage of that. So it's just really weird. You know, I talked about the future of transportation is coming and we're dealing with it right now. Um, so that is where we are at with that. Uh, looking through the comments real quick, make sure that we didn't miss anything. Uh, real quick here, pardon me. All right, so wrap up in questions. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about Legislative Day and about Freedom Rally. I know that we are used to having things planned out very well, far and ahead. We're a pretty organized crew here at Abate of Illinois. I'm going to address Legislative Day first. Up until this week, I wasn't for sure, for sure, that we were absolutely going to be a go. Um, the rules kept changing. The rules down here in Springfield keep changing. The basic gist of it is this. COVID has everything FUBAR. And if you know what FUBAR stands for, you know what I'm talking about. It's pretty bad. Um, you don't know what the rules are one day to the next sometimes down here. Um, so we are going to go through with Legislative Day. We're working on two different plans right now. One plan would be where you schedule individual meetings with your legislators via phone or Zoom, or we're working on slating out a schedule in an email that will go out to the General Assembly, hopefully next week, saying, hey, get your members to sign up for certain time slots. And then I try to pair people who are from their area of the state with these time slots and try to put us all together in Zoom meetings down at the hotel, which is the State House Inn. That's the direction I'm leaning now, given that we're able to do some more things with capacity limits in Springfield. We just raised our capacity limits again not too long ago. 
Um, I think it's a viable option. I just have to do some technical tests down there at the State House Inn. I'm doing those later this week. We'll know more. Uh, same vein, Freedom Rally. I've had a lot of people ask, are we going to be at the IDOT lot? Are we going to be at IDOT? Are we going to be at IDOT? The state is still in emergency. And the issue is the IDOT lot, it shares a lot with IEMA, which is the Emergency Management Agency Command Center. The state police actually have control of the IDOT lot. Now, Mark Wearies and myself have been working very hard to negotiate with the city, negotiate with the Capitol Building Police, and get everything taken care of to where Freedom Rally will happen. We just don't know what the rally point is going to be just yet. We're working on several different locations up and down Dirksen Avenue. So if you're trying to plan ahead for hotels, still plan like it was going to be IDOT. Still plan like it's going to be Dirksen Avenue. If you're coming down to the Freedom Fest, which Lincoln Land Debate and Mid-State Debate are holding down in Taylorville, we will take you straight from that Freedom Fest right to the rally point so you don't have to worry about hotels and all that fun stuff. We're working on it. Please just be a little bit more patient with us. Things are going to be a little bit more last minute this year. They're going to be a little bit more seat of the pants. COVID just really has us all screwed up. There's no nice way of putting that. Um, with that, I appreciate you all tuning in this week for This Week in Abate. Chris and I are going to take next week off. Um, part of that is I've just got some legislative stuff that really needs to be handled. Um, Chris is going to take it off. He's trying to get some PR stuff together. We hope that you're enjoying these shows. I really do ask if there's things that you like, things that you don't like, don't, you know, put it in the comments or email us. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, and what you want to see. Also, let me know who you'd like to see for a guest because first Tuesday of next month, I'm going to be bringing on another guest host. Let me know who you want to see. Other than that, everybody have yourselves a wonderful evening, and I will see you out and about on the road. Have a good one.